Oh, hey Raiders, Mr. Swanson here, coming to you as Captain Swanson in this case. Um, just outside of Washington, D.C. right now. It is Monday evening as I record this, but probably Tuesday as you get the chance to watch it. Your first day back to school. I believe I haven't forgotten about that. So I won't be there with you. I really do miss you already. Um, you know, there's a whole lot I, I can't say and won't say. You see, I got a got a hotel room background. That's uh, the government's taking care of us. We're in nice lodging. Um, there's, a, there's a handful of things I can't say and won't say about the mission. Just know that we're being all taken care of right now. Uh, I hope to maybe be able to take a couple pictures with a, a more historic background uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming days. But uh, right now, I just wanted to come to you and talk a little bit about your first day of class. If we can't be together, uh, we can at least still maybe hear each other's voices. And feel free to uh, drop me a note back uh, in the comments below or email. Uh, of course, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts on day one of class. Um, what you're going to do today, we are going to dive into the Paleolithic and Neolithic Revolution. Basically, prehistory. Well, what is prehistory? It's history, but prehistory is characterized as pre-writing. I know uh, some of you probably put pre-Netflix on the, uh, the pre-test, and well, probably technically not wrong. That's not the right answer. Uh, prehistory is characterized as pre writing you're going to discover how once mankind figured out how to record his thoughts and accomplishments and uh written in written language that's when history began to really become um something that we can study versus interpreting artifacts and um, um in historical locations where there's no type of writing what you're going to do today what i'm asking you to do is watch a video remember i like to bring uh, other voices into the classroom we hung out with my friend historian matt whitman when we're learning to think how, uh, learning to think like a historian. Today you're gonna hang out with my friend Hip Hughes. I really enjoy Hip Hughes videos. I believe he brings a lot of energy uh, to a screen, right, as best you can. Multimodal learning, he's gonna say it, show it, and uh, you know, through your note taking and activities that I give you, you're gonna put your hands on it. So that is all the learning styles taken care of in the same lesson. And, you know, it can't be my voice all the time, so I like to bring Hip Hughes into the classroom as a different perspective. Later, next week, you're going to hang out with my friend John Green when, we, uh, when you do a Crash Course History video. So just some of my favorites that, uh, whether we're distance or even in the, or in the classroom, I like to bring these other voices into our learning experience so that you can uh, learn from a whole bunch of different perspectives, a bunch of different educators, not just myself. An activity I'd like you to do today before you get to uh, any other reading or any other videos is take out the first sheet I gave you should be behind your activities divider. It's a blank timeline. I want you to, instructions are typed on it, but I'll explain right here as well. I want you to just brain dump. Just let, let the information fall out of your brain the best you can as to about how much history you think you know right now. You gotta start with the beginning of the world and take it up to 2020. I know, I know now it's a 2021. Just brain dump as much history as you can uh, and put it on the timeline where you think it goes. Now. We could uh, we go back and forth a little bit about how old is the Earth, and you know actually it's a it's not an educational standard for me to define that. So we uh, we don't have to dial in on how old is the Earth. Science can say uh, old Earth and new Earth. Religious texts will say old Earth and new Earth. There's arguments on both sides, and uh, like I, uh, as I like to do, I can point you to sources where you can make your own decision. So it's not really the conversation we're going to have today. How old is the Earth? Just start at the beginning of time. And you might drop down something like dinosaurs. You know, at a certain point, you could drop the uh, American Revolution. Obviously, there's a whole lot in between. Just brain dump what you think you know about world history onto that blank timeline. And then sit back and uh, reflect on how much you, uh, you probably surprised yourself with how much you thought you knew. Or maybe you stumped yourself and you're like, mm, I don't know. You know, I kind of don't even know where to start. It's a good starting point. You know, if we did this activity in class, we talk about how you probably do know more than you think. Uh, you all come up with different amounts of history that you know, and that's kind of a different starting position for each student. So uh, just, just a bit of a fun activity. Try to do it without Googling, right? That's not the point, just to come up with the right answer. I want you to reflect on how much you think you know right now. Then you're going to watch two videos. The first video is going to be a population growth video. It's a little bit quiet, okay? There's not any rocking background music, but I'd ask you to just embrace it. For, uh, for what it is and uh, kind of have an aha moment about how much humans have grown across the span of known world history. And then you're gonna get into hip hues. That's gonna be the conversation for today. 
Uh, if you take a look at my slides as well, I'm going to go over them briefly right now as well. Um, this is the kind of conversation we'd have in class where we together. And, uh, you know, reading the slides alone, they're not all-encompassing. They're not super lengthy in terms of reading. That's because we have conversation in class, right? That's what makes it an experience. Well, I want to bring you something similar. So in talking about prehistory, prehistory, before writing, we're talking about the Paleolithic age, Paleolithic cavemen, right? You might understand it to be cavemen. And if you look at the screen, if you actually uh, animate, this, uh, uh, pull up the whole PowerPoint slide and run the animation, you'll see, uh, you'll see a caveman. Paleolithic era is uh, identified by humans being hunters and gatherers. A uh, fancier word for this is being nomads or nomadic. They were constantly on the move, not just for kicks and giggles, not because they uh, wanted to, but just legitimately for survival. Hunters and gatherers have to keep moving to find the next food source. People were nomadic. They never got a chance to sit down, plant some roots, build a civilization. This is the Paleolithic area. Major characteristic of Paleolithic is that it was before writing. Prehistory equals pre-writing. Now, as I kind of mentioned before, the disciplines of archaeology, that's the study of stuff. The disciplines of anthropo anthropology, that's the study of people. We're just able to understand what happened during prehistory, but there was no writing yet during this time. If you're looking at the slide, you see two gold stars. Uh, at, at the point where it says prehistory equals pre-writing. For the rest of this class, when you see two gold stars, you're gonna lock that in, maybe write it down in your notes if it's not already prompted in your notes. That is a future test question answer. I'm not spoon feeding you, I'm hooking you up, a little different. Uh, I, like the, uh, I like the animation because it goes from a caveman uh, being a oh, oh, ah, ah, caveman, just beating himself on the head with a club. Maybe that's too stereotypical, I apologize. But now this caveman has a pencil in his hand. He has uh, entered history where he is able to write. The Paleolithic era becomes the Neolithic era is changed by agriculture. Our caveman now has a carrot in his hand. Remember, nomads, people who are nomadic, are constantly on the move, not because they want to be, but because of for survival. They're always looking for the next food source. Well, in the Neolithic Revolution, mankind learns how to stop, plant, grow some roots, both met metaphorically and literally, growing roots in the ground, and they can pull their own food out of the ground. So agriculture gives mankind the ability to grow and stay in one place for the first time. So that's your quick lesson on paleo Paleolithic and Neolithic ages. And my friends, that is early history. This is your day one of class. We are now ready to dive into ancient Mesopotamia tomorrow. Before you go, I wanna tell you a little bit more about uh, what I might be doing in these next couple of days in Washington, DC. I'm here with the Georgia Army National Guard. We're here to support district and federal authorities through the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. The National Guard here has helped to ensure the peaceful transition of power. Remember, we talked about the father of the country, George Washington, saying that this grand experiment of America will not be tested with the election of the first president, but rather the election of the second, and that a hallmark of American government has to be the peaceful transition of power. So the National Guard, up to 25,000 of us, are here to ensure the peaceful transition of power. So 25,000 guardsmen, I'll be the one in camouflage if, uh, if you're looking. Uh, our first priority, personally, is the Guard as a whole, and then also me personally, my first priority is to protect people and property. And uh, you know, when people see the National Guard, they know we're here to help. So that's what I hope you see on your TV screens. You see soldiers with weapons, with shields, with helmets, protective vests. I hope you know that we're here to help. When people see the National Guard, they know we're here to help and that's all we're here to do. Raiders, I love you and I uh, can't wait to be with you again. I hope you will watch the historic inauguration on Wednesday, January 20th. And uh, until then, be good. Mr. Swanson, out. Thank you.